you have a really well-known story and countless documentaries and books document your journey. I wanted to start by kind of exploring what it means to you to be in a forest and to describe what it feels like to be in a forest like Gombe. To be in a forest, any forest really, I have this very strong understanding of the interconnectedness of all the life forms and how each little species has a role to play. And just the disappearance of one species can have a ripple effect which can and has led to um, ecosystem collapses. And of course, this wasn't apparent when I first got to Gombe, but gradually as I got to know the forest, I began to understand more and more. And for me, it's the most wonderful place to be. And I have a very strong feeling of a spiritual connection with the natural world when I'm out in the rainforest on my own. Looking at the project now, I believe the Institute started working in uh, Uganda in 1991. And it seems that it was part of this expansion of your um, activism, the reach of the Jane Goodall Institute. Uh, why was Uganda chosen and um, why, why did you expand along the Albertine Rift? Well, first of all, you know, the work began uh, in Tanzania, obviously, because that's where I was studying chimpanzees. And when I realized that the forests were going so fast, and chimpanzee numbers were dropping, that's when we began our community-based conservation that we called Take Care or Takari. So why Uganda? Well, when I was first going to Africa to try and learn more about the problems faced by the chimpanzees, and that was in 1986 after a conference, uh, one of the range countries that I visited was Uganda, and I went into the Budongo forest and met a lot of the people there, and um, also started working with captive chimps and improving their situation. So I got to know people in Uganda, and as we expanded the Jane Goodall Institute's programs and Roots and Shoots, Uganda being so close to Tanzania uh, was obvious. So it's, you know, it started in Tanzania. And then actually, I think the next one, oddly enough, was the Republic of Congo. There was DRC in Burundi and Uganda, and eventually moving to Senegal and Mali and, and Gabon. So it, we're all over the place now. But it began in Tanzania and then why the Albertine Rift? Because that is one of the forests with the greatest um, biodiversity, the greatest number of endemic species. And it provides or provided an unbroken uh, habitat for chimpanzees. And as time went on and as habitats got increasingly encroached upon, this Albertine Rift forest was fragmented, just like the whole of that great equatorial forest belt across the continent. And so the Elbertine Rift is very important for many, many reasons. And that's where, you know, most of the Uganda's chimpanzees are. So of course, it's very important for us. So as part of the partnership between JGI and One Tree Planted, we're going to be planting 3 million trees how much of an impact will those extra 3 million trees make to the Kagombe Central Forest Reserve and to um, the biological corridor that we're hoping to restore? Well, I think it'll make a huge difference and it's desperately important. And if it doesn't happen, I mean, yes, forests can regenerate naturally if they're left. Um, we've seen that happen around Gombe, but it's gone so far now. You know, the environment is in such a, a dire situation that we need to help it along. And so planting these trees and caring for them, which we do and you do, um, that's, that's absolutely key. And to monitor the progress and to make sure that the trees that are planted are the right species, are planted at the right time, um, they're, they're, they're cared for. And that of course can now be done with all these magical digital opportunities that we have with GIS, GPS, satellite imagery, putting the information up on platforms in the clouds. All to me, sheer magic, but it works. <laughs> How important is it that individuals don't see themselves as um, disempowered or isolated? Uh, how much impact can one person make? Well, it's very important because 
as I say, when I began Roots and Shoots, it was um, partly because young people were getting disconnected from nature, but more importantly, it was that young people were, so many of them didn't seem to have hope for the future. And they were either depressed or, or angry. And some of them were, you know, deeply depressed. And mostly though, it was just apathy, just didn't seem to care. When I talked to them about why do you feel like this, they from all over the world said more or less the same, because you've compromised our future. I mean, not me personally, but, and there's nothing we can do about it. And we have compromised the future of our young people. It isn't that we've, uh, as the saying goes, we haven't inherited this planet from our ancestors, we've borrowed it from our children, but we've actually stolen that future and we're still stealing it today. And the part I didn't agree with was when they said, there's nothing we can do about it. I thought there was, and that's why Roots and Shoots began. And I found that as the young people, you start talking to them about what, what are you really worried about? Well, the world is a mess. I say, yes, well, uh, you can't change the world just like that. I mean, <laughs> you can't look around the world today and listen to the news and not feel depressed. I mean, you can't help it. But think about what do you care about? I care about um, deforestation. Well, is there any woodland near you? Can you do something locally? Can you clean up a stream? Can you collect trash? Can you raise money to feed the homeless? Can you volunteer in a shelter for stray dogs? Once they get involved, work out what they want to do, roll up their sleeves and get out there and take action, particularly with groups of them tree planting, for example. Um, then that tends to alleviate that feeling of helplessness and hopelessness, which many, many, many people feel. You know, this, the, the awareness, general awareness of what we're doing to the planet has skyrocketed recently. So why aren't more people doing something about it? Because they feel helpless. And so how important for everyone to understand that every day we live, we make some impact on the planet. And at least if we're in a reasonably affluent society, we can choose what sort of impact we make. Mm -hmm.